Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mia, I'm the maker behind Knit and Grace, um, or welcome to my channel if this is the first time that you are joining me. Uh, today we are going to be sewing. Um, so as I mentioned in my last video, I am going to be making the wool fork dress. And so I decided that I was going to go ahead and make my wearable twill and sort of take you through that fitting process with me. So before we get started, I will take you on a quick little tour of my office slash studio setup that I have set up here at home. So first up, when you walk into my office studio, you see my sewing setup front and center. Um, so I have the Ikea Norden desk, which is really great. It's super spacious, great for cutting. Um, and also you can fold it down if you ever need to use the room for anything else. Um, this room is real life. I've not cleaned up. Um, it's used for multiple purposes. I mentioned in my last video that our kitten just got spayed. So she is confined to this room. Let's see if you can see her. Say hi, honey. Um, and so she's currently confined to this room. Um, this is my dress for Mimi. She is wearing half of a pajama set that I've not finished, um, in this cute little Star Wars print. Um, but yeah, this is my main sewing setup. I have my serger and my sewing machine, my sewing box. I have all of the beverages that will be powering today's sewing. Over here, I have two Calyx units that are being used to house all of my craft supplies. So whether it's my books, my fabric, um, my fabric stash, and not even close to being anywhere near the amount of yarn stash that I have. Um, and then, like I mentioned, this also operates as my office. So I have a few different sewing projects that I have going on there. Um, but that is my printer. And then on this side is my office setup. Um, and so when I'm not working during the week, I set up my ironing station in front of here. So that is my desk. I have um, one of these IKEA cabinet things that hold not only patterns, but also sewing supplies and such. So that is my little setup and another shot of Penny playing, which she should not be doing. So um, getting into the patterns, and I did mention that I made some changes to the pattern and I'm gonna try to show you without um, really getting into too much of the integrity of the pattern. I don't wanna give anything away, but I did shorten the pattern by quite a bit. and and. The pattern, and specifically by four inches, the pattern does call for you to shorten it up here, um, which is within the margins of the crop. Um, but I found that when I first started folding it, and I'll show you on the front first. Um, oh, actually, I didn't fold it on the front, but when I, I did fold it on the back so when I folded it I knew that if I had used the actual fold lines and fold it up the way that you normally do it would interfere with the dart so I decided to fold down instead but when I did that it was still quite a bit of hangover here as you can see and that's just because, you know, I'm shortening it by four inches, which is quite a lot. So I actually fold it the way it's supposed to be folded. When you shorten a pattern, you're then supposed to grade it into the pattern itself. And so I knew that that would interfere with the dart and I didn't want to really start moving darts around and things like that. So instead I decided to actually fold it below the hip at the tunic point and so I did my folds and then typically because I was taking so much off it had about two inches of overhang that I would need to grade into the pattern and typically what I would do in that case because this is a really wide pattern I would just cut off the two inches because in reality I don't need it at the hips um, and I the way that I would normally do that is I would actually cut it shift it over and 
cut the two inches from the middle, which I think is the proper way to do it. But because I didn't want to um, sort of cut into the rest of the pattern, I wanted to be able to use this if I wanted to make the tunic one day or the crop. I didn't want to cut the actual pattern. What I actually did was I laid the front pattern over it at that two inch overhang. So I sort of moved, shifted it over the two inches above the front and then traced along and then just cut it off of the edge. So that's kind of what I did. Um, not sure that that's completely correct, but um, it gave me what uh, the sort of look that I was looking for. And the nice thing about it is now because I folded it and I haven't completely cut it, is if I then unfold my shorten line, I can then make the tunic length version. The pattern um, lines are not affected in any way. So that's kind of what I did there. Um, I showed you all the fabric in my last video that I'm going to be using, but I'll show you again. I have prepped it. Um, so this has now been pre-shrunk, um, especially because it's linen. Um, I probably wash it at a, no, I'm not probably. I do wash, pre-wash my linen at a much hotter, um, temperature and a higher heat setting than I normally would because linen does shrink quite a bit so i want to make sure i get all the shrinking out of it before i start um sewing with it and so actually a trick that i learned from lindsay of so busty i had never really prepped my fabric before and it would come out of the dryer like super wrinkled and with especially something like linen it frays a lot um and so what she does is um, she just folds the two raw edges together. So as you can see, this is my four yards of fabric. You just fold it in half, so this is two yards. And then I just finished off my edges with the serger. So then now I'm just gonna cut this little bit off and you will lose a tiny little bit of fabric, but it's not anything substantial. And then your fabric comes out like really great I remember, I remember she mentioned in her video that she doesn't have to iron the fabric after she takes it out of the dryer i'm like there's no way like you still have to iron the fabric just because it's folded this way does not mean that it's going to magically come out not wrinkled well that was wrong because look at this fabric it's pretty unwrinkled especially being a linen blend i may still pre-iron it before i start cutting into it it really doesn't need it though um because it's really not bad, so we'll see. Um, so this is the pink that I will be using. It's um, the uh, Kaufman Linen Cotton Blend that I'll be using for the 12 today. And then while I was at it, I also prepped my final fabric, which is the Figo Harmony Linen Crosses. So I'm really excited to see how this is gonna look. I think that is perfect. Um, for against my skin so I am going to start cutting into this fabric and um, I don't know if I'll have space to show you all how I set up my cutting but I'll try and if not then I will just see you on the other side after I've cut my fabric okay so it's been two hours I was not able to film the cutting process because the cat was just going crazy. Like, it should not take me two hours to cut out a dress. Although it was a little fiddly because the pieces are so big. Um, the good thing was that I was able to still save on some fabric even though I wasn't able to cut it on the fold. Um, just because of the width of my pieces, I was able to line them up the way that she calls for in the flat fabric pattern. Um, where you're kind of alternating the width, the wide sides. Um, so I was able to line them up side by side as opposed to sort of slightly off center because they were still um, within the width of the overall fabric. So I was able to still save quite a bit of fabric, which I'm really surprised about and I'm really happy about. So I have about a half yard left of just full on fabric. Um, and then I have about two, two larger size scraps that I was able to save. So um, we will see what I do with that. I actually may use the pink as the facing for the final, um, just because I like the look of the plain fabric for uh, the facings. So I do have like a nice big 
pile of cabbage over here and I'll have to figure that out because I have so much cabbage and I have nothing to do with I may have to like maybe knit a poof or something um but yeah I've just been listening to an audiobook as you can see from my headphones and I pulled my hair back because it got a little hot um and I took a quick break just to make myself a smoothie so I can actually now get into it so when I got this fabric I didn't get coordinating thread just because I got it on fabric.com. Um, so I look through my stash and I have a thread that is pretty close. So now I just need to set up my machine and also uh, set up my facings. So I have to actually iron on the interfacing. So um, I have that and then I'll iron them on and get, the, get those going. Um, one thing is because this fabric is the same on the right and the wrong side, I did actually label I think you can see maybe I did label all of my wrong sides just so that I know uh, which is which so we will go ahead and get started now was to do all of your facings, interface all of your facings, which I did, and to stay stitch. Um, stay st stitching is one of those things that I really took for granted in the beginning as a sewist as well as interfacing, but it really does go a long way with helping things stretch out, like your, uh, your neck and armholes not stretch out while you're sewing, um, and it just helps you, you know, keep everything nicer so that you have a more professional look. So uh, let's figure out what the next step is. So the next step is going to be the pockets. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm making the sleeveless version with pockets and ties. So um, the pockets are actually made to be folded. And so you turn them uh, right side out after you sewed them and sort of encasing all of your raw edges on the inside of the pocket. So I will go ahead and get that started.
I've gone ahead and finished the pocket, um, turned it inside out, uh, pressed it, and top, top stitched the top part. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the um, dress fronts. And um, a nice thing about this pattern is that it features French seams. So it's really available to any sewist with any type of sewing machine. Um, but Jackie does give you the information for your seam allowance if you were to decide to make it just the regular seams and finish your seams either with a serger or pinking shears or zigzag stitch, however you'd like to do it. Um, Originally, I was going to finish my seams off just with my serger, but I've decided that since this is my first time doing French seams and I do want to do the French seams on the final um, dress that I would give it a go with this one um, just to make sure that, you know, I understand the general concept, but, you know, just to see how it goes. Also, because linen is a little bit bulky, uh, just to see how it feels um as opposed to like a regular seam because obviously your seam is going to be much thicker since it's sort of doubled up on itself so i'm going to go ahead and um i've gone ahead and pinned my front wrong sides together and then you flip it over and do it again right sides together and essentially that encases your raw edge and that's what creates the front seam so i'm going to go ahead and get that started <laughs> left you I was doing all of my French seams so I did the front which is I think what I was doing and then I did the back and I did the side seams now oh and there's Chrissy cat making an appearance she is our other cat um, and you hear Penny crying in the background because we had to put her in her um, crate since so she was playing around too much but what I was getting at is I did all of my French seams except for the shoulder seam. The shoulder seam I actually just basted in with a long stitch because I wanted to see how the neck and the armholes fit. Because I mentioned I am pretty petite, sometimes um, I do have to make an adjustment 
in terms of the depth of the armhole, but this one fits me perfectly. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how everything is looking so far. So, so far you can see that um, everything is looking good. I like the neck, uh, the armholes are actually in a really good place. Um, my darts are pretty good. I just have to do a little bit more pressing there. Um, I really need to get myself a tailor's ham, but um, they're in a good place. They're actually, everything feels really good. Um, this dress is made with a dress form C cup um, and I am a D cup but I figured that because everything is super loose it would be fine so um, here are the pockets and everything is perfect with the length that I wanted it and it does have the cocoon um, and so I still have a lot a lot of volume in here so everything is looking good um, the only thing that I think I might change with the final is even though I still think the patch pockets look cute and I may still do the patch pockets, um, I will also put in inseam pockets because I think I just prefer putting things on my inseam pockets. I don't like my pockets looking bulky. Um, so they'll probably be more for show and I still will probably do inseam pockets. Here I didn't do any inseam pockets, but that's a really easy ad you can just um, download any template online and um, take a look at that so I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far so I need to finish the um, French seams on the shoulders and then I will go ahead and start the facings so today is another day as you can see from the outfit change um, I realized last night once I did the front seams on the shoulder seams that it was just getting late and so I called it a night and I spent the night just watching some TV and knitting and so I'm back at it today. Uh, so all I have left to do are the armhole and neck facings and then the hem of the dress. So hopefully I can finish that up really quickly. I have a day off from work today, so I haven't really done anything. I'm fresh faced, I haven't gone anywhere. Um, so hopefully I can get that done and sort of do a little bit of a, a reset for my week um, while I enjoy my dress and I have some test knitting that I have to get done. So hopefully I can spend the afternoon doing that. So I'm going to show you, uh, essentially finishing up the dress and, uh, hopefully we can finish up this video soon.
I am done and I am shiny. I've done all my facings. I did the hem. Um, I have the wrong color serger thread on my serger right now. Normally I like to serge the ends and then just do a single fold. Um, so I did do the double fold, but it's looking pretty good. I'm going to give like my hems, my facings, a final uh, press, but I'll probably leave the rest of the dress pretty untouched because um, like I mentioned in the process of prepping the fabric, uh, the fabric really didn't get wrinkled and it just has that natural crinkly um, linen look. So I did make the ties here. Um, and as I mentioned, the only thing that I might change for the final is I might just add in some inseam pockets because I don't like the look of having things in my pockets. Um, and I may add some uh, like loops for the ties. Uh, I'll see how I feel once I'm wearing um, the dress if that annoys me at all. So now I just have to clean up my workspace um, and get ready for the week. And uh, I will insert some footage of me wearing the dress. Hopefully my husband gets good footage. He is not a cameraman, um, or a good one, I should say. I should probably get him some kind of like lessons or something, but um, hopefully we get some good footage of me wearing the dress. Um, I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on this little bit of a sewing day turned into two days. Um, so I made the size six i believe and i'll enter in all my sizing information in the description but i made the size six i bought four yards of fabric i ended up with a little bit more than half a yard left um and also where else was i going with this i have no clue where i was going with this oh it took me about six hours and 20 minutes including cutting time although cutting took me a lot longer um because unfortunately i had to wrangle penny so probably the next time i do this cutting shouldn't take me more than 30 minutes um but i was having some issues with her so pro you know definitely like a good four hour project so it's a good uh weekend project to make so i hope you enjoyed this video and coming along with me um and i will see you in the next one bye